out front on this Friday, the breaking news, the backpack. So here's where we are with this. Sources are telling CNN that police believe they found the backpack belonging to the assassin who killed the CEO of United Healthcare, Brian Thompson. ABC News obtained a picture of the backpack. I'm going to just show it to you here. Again, this is ABC had gotten this picture of it. Uh, we are told that that backpack was found in Central Park in New York City. Now, you know that for days now, authorities have been scouring that park. They've been looking for the backpack, and it appears that they may now have it. That's crucial, of course. But what they do not have is the CEO assassin. And top New York Police Department officials tell CNN exclusively right now that they have reason to believe that the suspect left on a bus on Wednesday, hours after the killing. We also have reason to believe that the person in question has left New York City. We have, we have video of him entering the Port Authority bus terminal. We don't have any video of him exiting, so we believe he may have gotten on a bus. Okay, that, that's crucial information. So let's just start with all of where we are here, what we know about the suspect's mo movements after the murder in Midtown Manhattan. Is that, uh, investigators say the assassin, who they do believe acted alone. So, you know, we've talked about the, the phone call that he had just before the shooting. Right now, they're saying they believe he acted alone. So he uh, did this assassination, killing, shooting Brian Thompson in the back. Then he runs from the Hilton, uh, it, it, where he had shot Thompson with a silencer. He runs uh, on that bike, gets on a bike, goes into Central Park. He exits the park, and we'll show you the map here, around 77th Street. Just the context here, that's 23 blocks from where the murder took place. Uh, for anyone not a New Yorker, that is just over one mile. He then made his way to 85th Street, where police have this video of him on a bike. They say that's him and that they know that's him. Officials say from there, he walked up to 86th Street and grabbed a taxi to the George Washington Bridge bus station. Now, the George Washington Bridge is all the way north. You can see that green part uh, of Central Park. You got to go a long way up there, 90 blocks away. And that's almost five miles, okay? So he gets there in a taxi. Officials then have video, you heard them just say, entering that bus station. It is one of the busiest in the entire United States. There are 1,000 buses a day that go through that George Washington Bridge bus terminal. They say that is where they lose him because they don't see him leave. So if he got on a bus, at this point, that means he could be anywhere in the U.S., even perhaps beyond. I mean, take a look at the map, just of some of the locations that just from that bus terminal you can go to any day, Boston, Buffalo, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C. And obviously, that could just be the tip of the iceberg from there anywhere around the country or Canada. At this hour, DNA testing is being done on several items that they recovered at the scene of the assassination. That water bottle that we've mentioned uh, that the killer may have purchased just before killing Thompson that had a smudged fingerprint on it, that's undergoing testing. They're also testing a cell phone that was recovered at the scene. So these are all major developments in the backpack. We literally found out just a, just a few minutes here before we came on air. So let's go to Omar Jimenez, out front live, outside that George Washington Bridge bus station where the suspect was last seen. Omar, at this point, this is potentially a major break of some sort to show at what point he may have left the time that he may have left New York City. And it still, though, presents a big challenge because even with all the new details about where this person has been and how this person made their way all the way to this bus terminal, of course, with this person being seen entering and buses continually coming in and out, the question is, what bus did this person potentially get on? And, of course, who this person is as well. And you also mentioned a really key detail is a target for law enforcement over the course of this. Where was this backpack that the shooter was seen wearing at the time of the shooting? It's part of why they launched a pretty huge canvas throughout Central Park to try and figure out where this is. Well, now law enforcement believe they have found that backpack, which they had said was critical because not just of what could potentially be inside, potential clues, but also potential opportunities for DNA and fingerprinting. They're taking that bag for additional testing just to make sure it's the bag they're looking for. But again, as I mentioned, even with all of these new details, those two critical questions remain. Who is this person and where could they be now? Mm -hmm. We have a pretty good sense of where he has been in New York City, and we also now have reason to believe that he is outside of New York City. Tonight, the top brass of the largest police department in the country are telling CNN the person they've been hunting for around the clock for days could be anywhere. 
We have numerous assets from numerous, numerous different units from within the Detective Bureau and the department itself that are working on this. So it's all hands on deck right now. Could it lead us out of state? Absolutely. The NYPD says they believe the gunman who shot and killed United Healthcare CEO Brian Thompson outside of his Midtown Hotel Wednesday morning may have left the city on a bus miles north of the shooting site. We have video of him entering the Port Authority bus terminal. We don't have any video of him exiting. And they don't know which bus or where it was heading or when. They still don't even have his name. I think the bus is important because there's less scrutiny when one takes a bus. Um, and I think he felt, at least felt or believed, that he could blend in better and would not be um, necessarily um, somebody that would come to the attention of authorities like he would if he took a plane or um, even Amtrak. So I think it was a strategic decision. And while how he escaped the city remains a mystery, his journey into it is coming slightly more into focus. Officials believe he arrived by bus on November 24th around 9 p.m. The bus initially departed from Atlanta and may have made as many as 13 stops along the way, but it's unclear where he actually boarded. We're getting leads into our tip line and we chase every lead that we get. We could have detectives sit in front of a, you know, a, a monitor looking at video for eight hours to come up with an eight second clip. Police also today sent a water bottle and a cell phone found at the scene to the chief medical examiner's office, hoping for a DNA hit. One crucial detail authorities do have, these pictures of the suspect unmasked in the hostel he had checked into days before the shooting using a fake ID and cash. He's been traveling and walking around the streets of New York City, largely in a mask with his face covered. We had to go through lots of video evidence to get that one money shot of him with the mask down. And we learned that actually part of the reason they wanted that picture of the mask down to be circulated is because they wanted it to be seen outside of New York City, meaning they probably at least had some sort of suspicion this person might not be in the area anymore. But of course, a new chapter of this search begins and police leadership say they have the resources to help with searches that take them out of state. But of course, uh, as time continues to go on, the possibilities of where this person could be just grow, Aaron. All right. Thank you very much, Omar. So let's go now to the former Boston Police Commissioner Ed Davis. He was in charge during the manhunt for the Boston Marathon bombing suspects, the Sarnayev brothers. Also here, David Sarney, retired NYPD detective, and Kate Schweit. She was a senior official with the FBI who created the FBI's active shooter unit. All right. So uh, you, you all know more than anybody, um, anybody, a group here. So let me start with you, Ed. How big, uh, let me just show you a, a, the photo again of the backpack that ABC News had obtained. So this is the photo that they've put out, the backpack that they say they found in Central Park. Um, they say they believe it is the same one that the assassin wore when he killed uh, Brian Thompson. So if this is indeed the backpack, how big of a break do you think it could be, Ed? <clears throat> Hi, Aaron. It could be enormous. Uh, it all depends on what is inside there as a, as a start, right? Is the gun in there? Um, if the gun's there, it's going to tell us a lot about uh, where it came from, uh, tracking it back, uh, possibly finding out who purchased it or, or its history. Um, if there are clothing, pieces of clothing in there that he wore for an extended period of time, uh, even more DNA can be recovered from that hairs, fibers, uh, fingerprints, all of those things are likely uh, to be found on, a, on something like a backpack, which is really tight to the suspect's body. Um, yeah. Just the, the rubbing of the neck could, could turn uh, skin cells and, and DNA from, uh, from that. So uh, they'll also run down where the backpack came from. So there's an enormous amount of evidence potentially there. So, David, can I ask you, though, on this, right, you know, so even if it, it as, as Ed's talking about, rushes the back of the neck and you get the skin cells, you get all of that, um, then what? And I, I guess why I'm asking this is, if he hadn't committed a crime in the past, how much does that DNA tell you? I mean, I suppose once you eventually get his name, you can match it to him, but I mean now, in this time, trying to identify him, how much does the DNA help if he is not, if that DNA isn't in a, a, a legal system somewhere? Well, here's the issue with, with DNA, and DNA is an, a great way of identification of for individuals. Yeah. But if it's not in the system, it's not in a, a database, we still have data, we still have abilities to, to test it further. 
Uh, mm. DNA analysis has gotten much better in the present day. Uh, there's other ways in which we just don't, we can get in at least a match. Maybe there's an opportunity. We may not get a hit, which is a hit meaning you have an identified individual in this, yeah. but it's in the database. We have, we'll have something and you can compare it to other DNA, DNA uh, evidence or DNA analysis for possible family members that may have been uh, mm. perpetrators in crimes. So there is opportunity there. Nothing, as far as evidence is concerned, should ever be taken away or removed. It is always probative until it's deemed not.